During the last 25 years, I've been tying thousands of flies. And for that, I designed some tools and also redesigned some others. Many of you know about the magic tool already, but for the others, this is just a bit different. I will show you in the following sequences how to use them. The bobbin holder. This is a very important tool, but with that tool we have to face quite a few problems. First of all, we have to face the problem of the size of the spool. Depending on who is supplying the spool, they can be that big, that big, or that big. The second problem we have all the time is how to adjust the tension and the arm. And then the third problem, which is also a very important problem, is how easy it is to load the thread into the tube. So let me show you how that one works. First of all, you put the sleeve up like this to release the tension in the arms, and then you introduce the spool that way. You put a little bit of the sleeve down to have a little tension on the spool, and then you go around the dot here to have the thread in line with the exit here, and then you put it on the left side with a small angle like this and pull out 10 centimeters of thread and now you're in. It comes not out that way or that way. So no matter if you are left-handed or right-handed, it will work the same way. Easy. Now whenever you want to increase the tension on the spool, the only thing you have to do is to have a little pressure on the arms here and then move down the sleeves and you increase the tension. So it's very useful and very quick to change from one size of spool to another. Another very interesting feature you have on that tool is this hook, which allows you to use it as a twister. For instance, I will use a little bit of dubbing to show you that. First, create a loop. Get into the loop like this, release the thread, and you can catch automatically the loop. Reopen, put the dubbing in between, and then now spin your bobbin. When you've got enough, you just put the bobbin in that position and start to use the rotation of your vise, like this. And when you reach the end, the only thing you have to do is to use your needle, release the loop, and then finish the work. Simple. The needle, often named dubbing needle. On the market, we have a lot of different ones. They are mainly with a very large handle. I personally do not like them. They are not precise to work with. That one is with a very short handle. And on top of that, you have a very sharp point which allows you to split the thread and create dubbing loops. Let me show you. The first thing you have to do is to flat the thread. For that, I'm doing that with the thread. And then, Take your needle that way, and you can be very precise when you open the loop like this. You will see, it's easy. The plier. The major problem with pliers is the quality of the grip of the feather. Personally, I use that one to be able to twist and wrap the CDC safely around the hook shank. Let me show you how that works. Take the CDC by the large section and then wrap around like this. Then take the tool that way, push down the spring and then introduce the feather under the hook and push up the spring. Then you cut the excess of the feather and now you can twist and wrap safely around the hook shank that way. And you will have a very nice conical body shape made out of CDC without any problem because you are safe using that plier.
This tool is not dedicated to only one feather. You can use in the same time two, three or four feathers together. And that will allow you to make very big bodies like you would need for terrestrial insect imitation or caddies. Now we have three different CDC feathers here. Take the three stems together and without even sinking, just grab them in one time like this. Trim the excess and twist and wrap around the hook shank. You will have a very dense high density body and a big diameter. Trim the excess. This is the only plier which allows you to grab together one, two, three or four feathers. The loop clamp now. This is kind of nice when you want to incorporate two rows of component in the same loop. Like what we need when we make a parachute pattern. Let me show you. First of all, you split the thread. Then to keep the loop open, you use your scissors like this. And now I am going to incorporate the first row of component. This is going to be the post of the parachute. But now to reopen the loop to incorporate the other element, I need to close the loop. And that the purpose of that clamp. So now I can reopen the loop and introduce the second row of material in the same loop. Start to spin a little bit in your fingers and then you can release like this, spin the bobbin holder and you are done. You have the two components on the same loop. The twister. Sometimes you cannot split the thread to incorporate what you have to put in, especially when you have a large amount of material. So what do I use? A regular loop technique, like this. Sometimes I even make two loops in order to be more powerful when I twist. And for that I need a twister. The large majority of the twisters are based on the weight. This is the weight which makes the arm close. That one not. You just move the spring up and down to open and close the loop. This is nice. And as well, as you see here, it's long enough that you can go around the bobbin without any problem. Let me show you. So we have the loop like this. You just move the sleeve a little bit that you are able to catch the loop. And then, as you see, I can open or close and leave the tool like this. Now, let's go open and close with the material like this. I move up the spring and then, because the sleeves rotate, it's very easy to twist in order to have a nice, dense, strong repartition of your material. Now you have to weigh. You can either go like this to wrap around or use your hand to control the material like this. And as you see here, that tool is long enough that it escaped the bobbin. So it's very comfortable and very quick to use. Now I switch back to the bobbin holder in order to manage the final knot like this. Trim, push everything on the back, make the head, and here you go.
down to be open and up to be closed. Simple. The web finisher. This is not a new tool. I redesigned it because I like to have an handle which rotate by itself and also to have a spring-loaded hook that allows very, very tiny knots like this. Let me show you. First, pull out 10 centimeters of thread, hook that one first, the large one on top second, and then create a triangle. Then a few wraps, and you can release it like this. Personally, I very often make two knots because I pull a little bit more on the second one than on the first one. Let me show you another thing. You see now the triangle is getting smaller and smaller, but even on a small triangle like this, you can still release the thread. It is very useful when you are tying tiny flies. 20 or even smaller than that. This is very important to use the right tool at the right time. For instance, this one, this is a small and curve. I use it to cut all around when you have a curved hook like this. If you have a straight hook, I will use this one, pointed and straight. You can easily cut all the barbs and have a nice conical body shape like this. And now the large one is dedicated for the magic tool. You know, when you want to trim off the stems, you just make one cut and everything is done at once.